Very good Thursday morning to you. I'm Jim Shuto. And I'm Poppy Harlow. We're glad you're with us. Just hours from now, a crucial hearing. A Florida judge will hear arguments from former President Trump's lawyer and the Justice Department over whether a special master should be appointed to review those documents seized by the DOJ at Mar-a-Lago. In a filing just last night, Trump's lawyers pressed their argument that an independent review is needed. This despite the Justice Department saying it has already parsed through those documents, which, which is with what is known as a filter team to look for any privileged communications. Trump's lawyers acknowledged that classified material was found at Mar-a-Lago, but argued that should not have been a cause for alarm and should never have led to the search of Trump's home. Trump's lawyers insisted the National Archives should have expected to find classified material because they were presidential records. Let's begin this morning with CNN correspondent Kara Scannell. Kara, you are there. You are waiting for this hearing to begin. What more can you tell us about the filing that came in uh, last night right before the deadline, their main arguments, and notably what they didn't say, what they didn't argue? Yeah, that's right, Poppy. So last night, the Trump team had submitted their filing, 19-page filing, where they were asking a judge to appoint a special master. That's this third-party person to review the materials that were seized at Mar-a-Lago, not far from here. And they say that the FBI filter team that was in place and reviewed these documents had unchecked discretion when they were reviewing them. They're arguing that the judge should impose someone who is neutral to review the materials. And they also pushed back at the FBI and the Justice Department's filing on Tuesday, where they said that they had uncovered twice as many classified documents when they went in and, and seized the materials at Mar-a-Lago just three weeks ago, twice as many that they had gotten from the Trump side in the subpoena. And Trump's lawyers saying that there should be no surprise that any of this material was sensitive. Here's what they wrote in the filing. The purported justification for the initiation of this criminal probe was the alleged discovery of sensitive information contained within the 15 boxes of presidential records. But this discovery was to be fully anticipated given the very nature of presidential records. Simply put, the notion that presidential records would contain sensitive information should have never been cause for alarm. Now, one thing that is not in this filing is, the, is any discussion about whether Trump had declassified any of these documents, the 320 records that DOJ has retained from Mar-a-Lago. Uh, he has made that pitch publicly in a lot of his social media posts, but his lawyers are not making that argument today. And, of course, the Justice Department pushing back, saying there's no need for a special master, that they, their filter team has already done this review, and that these records actually belong to the government, not the former president. So he shouldn't receive access to these records, and he shouldn't be able to review them himself. Jim Poppy. Kara Scannell, the fight goes on. Thanks very much. So joining us now to discuss, Glenn Gerstel. He's former general counsel of the National Security Agency, serving, we should note, during both the Obama and Trump administrations. Glenn, good to have you back, uh, particularly with your experience here. So one note in Trump's response, on social media at least, he looked at this picture that the FBI agents took of the evidence they gathered there at Mar-a-Lago and said that they took them out of cartons and spread them around on the carpet, saying, in effect, he did have those classified materials there. And we should note again, this is after uh, there had been repeated requests to return them and after his lawyers had said that all the classified materials had already been handed over to the government. From a legal perspective, is that public admission by the president relevant? Is it evidence of potential criminality? It, Jim, it's certainly a shocking admission. Uh, the stories changed from uh, the documents weren't there, we gave them all back, they were declassified, to now some rather startling admissions by the, by the president and, and, uh, and his lawyers in his legal filing. Um, you know, the fact that that picture was displayed that way, uh, uh, President Trump seems to indicate that it was staged or something unusual, that this isn't, this isn't how he stored the records, they weren't stored on the floor. Well, there was no thought that the records were, were stored on the floor. This was a photograph typically taken by law enforcement after they collect evidence. And think of all the photographs we've seen of after a drug bust or a mm -hmm. raid uh, of, of guns displayed on a table by the local police department or the drugs array. That's exactly what this photograph was. It was, it was something that the, that the FBI does to preserve uh, a, a sense of what range of evidence they collected. So it, it, there was no, nothing inappropriate about the photograph at all. Uh, Glenn, thanks so much for joining us, especially given your yeah. experience at the NSA. And I just wonder if you expect the argument laid out in these 19 pages from Trump's legal team 
that nothing to see, basically nothing to see here, folks. This should have been expected. He was president. It should be no surprise that he would have documents like this. How would you expect that to potentially move uh, Judge Aileen Cannon in either direction today? It's true that there's no surprise that the Trump, that, that President Trump would have had access to sensitive and classified documents. Of course, that was his job. But he wasn't supposed to take them home with him. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think that particular point is going to uh, uh, be persuasive with the judge uh, today at, at today's hearing. Um, the, the judge is going to be considering their, their claim for the appointment of a special master, which is something that is in the discretion of the judge. The judge doesn't have to do that. And I might add, uh, it's generally disfavored. This is not a common step, um, but, but it could be done. The, the judge could decide to sort of bend over backwards in the interests of giving the former president every possible opportunity and go ahead and go ahead with the special master, even though legally it's on very shaky ground. Mm -hmm. You wrote in a recent op-ed for the Washington Post, I'm a quote here, that the intense politically charged focus on criminality deflects attention from the far more pernicious danger that we fail to appreciate the national security risks posed by casually tossing government documents into moving boxes. You, of course, served as general counsel again for the NSA, one of the intelligence agencies. I explain the national security risk here, and also if you could, if uh, an NSA employee or another government employee, current or former, right up to director level, did the same, would they be prosecuted? So the significance here is that these documents, and we saw that they're top secret, we saw that they may contain information about human sources, spies, uh, mm -hmm. other, other very, very sensitive secrets. This is all information that our adversaries, Russia, China, other countries, would love to get their hands on, either to see the substance of it or to figure out how we got that information. That could be really dangerous to us if, if uh, those uh, adversaries found out about that information. So we need to do some kind of damage assessment to figure out what are the chances that they access this information. And if they did, maybe we need to take steps to deal with it. If you, if you lost your keys to your house, uh, you'd wonder if you have to change all your locks in your home. You, mm -hmm. You'd worry uh, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if someone else got into your house while you weren't there. What else did they see? Well, the same principle applies here. Uh, we, we could have to do anything from pull agents out of foreign countries because we think they might have been compromised. And again, we're not going to take the risk. Uh, if, if we just think there's a possibility but can't rule it out, we're still going to have to go ahead and, um, and possibly take action in that regard. Mm -hmm. and, and as your latter quick point, uh, look, if, uh, if any government employee, whether high-ranking or low-ranking, violates the laws, takes home with them out of a secure facility uh, classified documents that are required to be handled in a very specific way, then if the elements of a crime are met, then yes, indeed, they would be prosecuted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.